What do we also notice when we have a dysregulated autonomic nervous system with sympathetic dominance? Gut issues. What do we notice when we have dysregulation or dysfunction in the vagus nerve? Gut issues. And what do we see in the large majority of folks with autoimmune disease? Gut issues, and this is likely why. Your nervous system health is everything. If you have a dysregulated nervous system, you cannot be healthy. So you heard me recently talk about food sensitivity, food intolerance, about the testing, if it's accurate, if we should be doing it. But I also spoke about something deeper. If we have food intolerance or food sensitivity, I mentioned about our nervous system and the role that our nervous system plays in our digestion. And it's imperative for us to understand this because to improve our digestion, we need to improve our nervous system. Now, this is very important. We have to understand how our nervous system connects to our digestion and how it connects to our immune system. So at this point, a lot of us are more than educated on what the parasympathetic nervous system does. We heard about rest and digest, about fight or flight or freeze, right? But I want to go into a little more detail rather than just saying that. I want you to know exactly what the nervous system is doing during digestion. It's really important for us to know because this is for us to understand the role it plays on how we react with our food. And it's an important, important, important concept because we eat food all the time and because so many of us are chronically stressed. Now, the nervous system has a vital role in motility. That's how the intestines move, when they move, but also how much blood they're getting and when. It's also essential for our nervous system to be functioning optimally because it also plays a role in shooting out those chemicals that help us break down and absorb food. Now, the more your nervous system is dysregulated during meals, the poorer movement of your intestines, the less blood you get to your digestive organs, the less you fully break down food, and the less you absorb that food. And actually, our digestive system has a nervous system of its own, believe it or not. It's called the enteric nervous system, and it has more than 100 million nerve cells. And you know when you get nervous and you feel those butterflies in your stomach? Well, that's your enteric nervous system at work. And this is why when we're stressed, we usually feel it first in our digestive system. It's the enteric nervous system firing off. And there are as many neurons in the system as there are in the spinal cord. And you wanna know what's fascinating about the enteric nervous system is that it can operate as its own system, independent of the brain. It's mostly connected to the brain by the vagus nerve, and I did a whole show on the vagus nerve. The enteric nervous system operates largely by the release of a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine. Now that pushes that motility, the blood flow, the secretion, and the absorption. Now when you get stressed, there's a different neurotransmitter at play. Remember, I just mentioned acetylcholine. Its antagonist is norepinephrine, and that's coming from the adrenals. This neurotransmitter actually does the opposite and it reduces movement of the intestines, reduces blood flow to the intestines, reduces secretion of the chemicals that break down food, and it ultimately reduces the absorption of those nutrients. And we feel those effects. They're potent when we're stressed. And that's the digestive system, but what about the immune system? For the immune system, it plays a role on how the body reacts to food. Now bear with me. For some reason, for so many years, medicine has looked at these two systems as separate right? The nervous system and the digestive system, which is consistent with the reductionist fashion of which the body is seen. But at this point, we know it's holistic. We know that all systems interact with each other and it's like a symphony. It couldn't be more true of the relationship with the nervous system and the immune system. We're now seeing evidence of a mutual bi-directional communication between the two. And when it comes to human physiology and how the body's functioning. Now, this was highlighted in an article in Frontiers in Immunology magazine called Neuroendocrine Networks Controlling Immune System in Health and Disease. The central nervous system regulates immune function, inflammation, and pathogen responses against host tissues through the production of inhibitory cytokines, hormones, and other soluble molecules able to signal the brain, which in turn exerts strong regulatory effects on the immune system. Now that's a quote from the article. In other words, the function of the immune system, inflammation, and how pathogens affect us are regulated by signals from the brain that are sent out to the immune system. And that's incredible, and here's why. Because the brain is regulating the immune system, and it's largely by the sympathetic nervous system and the vagus nerve. So then it stands to believe that any dysregulation or dysfunction in any of these are gonna compromise the healthy interaction between the brain and the immune system. What do we also notice when we have a dysregulated autonomic nervous system with sympathetic dominance? Gut issues. 
What do we notice when we have dysregulation or dysfunction in the vagus nerve? Gut issues. And what do we see in the large majority of folks with autoimmune disease? Gut issues, and this is likely why. Your nervous system health is everything. If you have a dysregulated nervous system, you cannot be healthy. Now, we just learned in more detail how the nervous system disrupts digestion. We just learned in more detail how the nervous system influences the immune system, inflammation, and even how pathogens are handled in the body. So how do we promote a healthier nervous system? Keeping a healthy body, reducing inflammation with good food? Sure, we know that. Strengthening and regulating the nervous system with good sleep and circadian balance? Yeah, sure, we know that too. Balancing sympathetic response with exercise, post-meal walks, reducing screen time, no phones during meals, being mindful when eating, well, we definitely know that helps. And we surely know about stress reduction techniques like meditation, yoga, tai chi, qigong, breath work, all super powerful, all helpful. And you may even know about the role of the vagus nerve in strengthening it. Things like polyvagal theory, all that juicy info, that's good stuff, but listen closely. It's all for naught if you have suppressed emotions and they're in the fascia, which the nervous system is actively utilizing resources to keep them suppressed. Do you know what happens when you liberate these emotions? When you feel them, when you transcend from them? The nervous system uses those resources to get back in balance. So if you have autoimmune disease, gut issues, do all the things the doctor tells you. I bet you already know most of the things that help, but if they haven't fully done the job, you have to, have to, have to, and I can't stress this enough, address the deepest parts of you. That's my piece, I'm sticking to it. I love you all. Address those latent emotions, those suppressed emotions, to really, really liberate your nervous system. Make sure your nervous system is actively in balance and in health. Do all of the other things more on the surface, but you gotta get to the root of it. Really hope that helped. Digestive health, autoimmune disease, nervous system, immune system, all of that is there for you right at your fingertips.